Hello everyone, my name is MedScorpion and welcome back to another reset video. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I thought this was gonna be that week. Judging by that video from Aztecross, this was gonna be a big week. Thinking that it was gonna be the start of that next, air quotes, mid-season update that they were talking about all the patch notes, but not really, because Bungie hasn't put out an update article, which usually means there's not anything out just yet. But aside from that, Getting into the usual week, it seems like this might have been the in, the launch day of Final Shape before the delay, just because of the fact that it currently activates all three reputation boosters. So if you wanted to rank up any of the Ritual Playlist, Crucible Gambit, or Strikes otherwise, there is currently boosted reputation rewards from all three of them. Now, usually this would mean, like I said before, this would be the last week of the season. But clearly it is not, because Final Shape still has a few months to go. But getting into it, if you're going to grind out your strikes for this week, currently the Adept is the Warden's Law, which is probably one of the better things to go for on the list of current Nightfall weapons. Heavy Burst Pistol, really good perks on it, good for PvE or PvPE. And on that same note as well, it just looks generally better and is a bit more unique than almost everything else on the list. But with that as well, the strike to go for, I forget what is for the week, just because I've been doing all of them, is currently the Heist or Legendary Sabs Battlegrounds in the Cosmodrone, which I'm learning is actually a lot harder than I thought, uh, but for a different reason, because I thought this was the Psyops Battlegrounds on the moon, which I was mistaken. It is actually the Cosmodrone, but at the same time, me and my team of Conqueror Gilded regulars took a few swings at it, and we didn't get to the final boss so yeah but aside from that all three elemental shields increased vanguard rank as mentioned before barrier and unstoppable you're going to be dealing with lots of barrier fallen and unstoppable hive void threat for incoming void damage being increased the usual modifiers extinguish limited revives fire pit for acolyte spawning fire pools on death radar is disabled and then overcharge weapons stasis and solar ice and fire as well as overcharge shotgun now, that is what is available from everyone else, but like I said, if you do have the Conqueror node active, you can go and do something else if you so wish. You just have to have not done it in the season. Then, the usual Gambit booster, and for Crucible, while we're talking about it, Rift for our 6v6 quick play rotation game mode for our standard game, but then Sparrow Control, so Sparrows are enabled for it. Then, usual free for all, Relic Labs as well, Elimination for 3v3 quick play, and then usual Comp, but of course, no Iron Banner, which means Trials will be active. Don't know if we'll be getting a Trials boosted, though, because we just had that one last week, and usually back-to-back -back boosters of the same kind is not exactly ever going to happen. But on that same note, just starting off through the rest of the world, in Eternity, for the Dares of Eternity Legend mode, just to get that out of the way, it is High Vex and Valis to Arc. Now, I kind of forgot something as well, just because I had some, but... As per insistence, there is no other weekly challenges still happening, so I'm just going to cover this now, and I'll say it every week. If you wanted to get Bright Dust or Experience from anything out of here, I would recommend doing it with what's available, because if you're waiting for something else to come around, you will be waiting until the season ends. So whether it's just for Bright Dust, you want XP, or you're trying to complete the big Bright Dust drop at the end of the season, go for it as soon as possible, because you won't be getting anything new. But on that same note, there, of course, is another Riven's Wish week, if I recall. Um, it's not exactly telling me what is available, so I would recommend checking that if you so want more things. But on that same respect, our weekly farming stuffs. Now, we have Grasp of Avarice for our weekly farming dungeon, which means it is weak to farm Artifice Armor from Grasp of Avarice, which, obviously... It, if you didn't know, Artifice Armor is pretty nifty, and this is probably the easier Master Dungeon to farm out, just in comparison to every other Master Dungeon that gives Avarice Armor. But, or Artifice Armor. But on the same note, Stasis and Surge, uh, stir, or Ice and Fire Surges again, Overcharge Rocket Launchers, which is pretty solid for burning, but then Barrier Overload Champions, because it's all fallen, and then, you know, all three shields, and the usual Seasonal Overcharge and Master Changes. But then for our raid, I believe... Nope, not rid of Nightmares. Where else would we be going? Uh, where is the raid? Well, it's probably one of the Legends tab modes then. Yes, our weekly farming raid is currently King's Fall, which as usual, all challenges are active. Mobility-focused armor for Master Mode. And of course, challenge modes and Master Modes means you can get access to Adept or Harrowed. 
gear from King's Fall Master Mode. But now that we're done with the farming stuff, Savor Crota, the current active week, is equal vessels, which is third encounter challenge. Basically, if you want to get challenge done, you have to rotate between every person in the list. I forget if it has to be the same order every time or once everyone has touched it, it could be a new order. But just keep in mind that it's easier to stay in one order. And then for our weekly exotic mission, it is the Operation Seraph Shield, which that gives red borders from Season of the Seraph. That is basically Ikelos weapons or the air quotes Seraph weapons. Pretty easy one to farm out. Uh, Master Mode is a little tougher than usual. And Revision Zero is a pretty solid option. It's one of those cases of when no other anti-barrier is around. Sure, you could do Wish Ender, but if you didn't have access to Wish Ender, there is also Revision Zero. On that note, the rest of the raids for their challenge modes, just starting about. Last Wish is Strength of Memory, which if I recall is Riven Challenge, and I think if you cheese Riven, you can do it by accident. Garden of Salvation has the Leftovers Challenge, which that is one I'm not exactly familiar with, just because Garden of Salvation is Garden of Salvation. Zeep Stone Crypt has the Evolved Trade Challenge, which is Third Encounter Nuclear Descent Challenge. Bit of a cluster on that one. Savathun's Throne World for Vow of the Disciple currently has the Swift Destruction Challenge. Basically, the first encounter kill all the Unstoppable Abominations relatively around the same time. Then for Vault of Glass, in its challenge mode, we have Wait For It, which is, I believe, Templar Challenge, where you cannot let it teleport. You have to kill it right away. Then, rounding it all up with the Root of Nightmares, current active challenge is the All Hands Challenge, which, if I recall, is Deseret Challenge. And while we are on Neo Muna, the weekly campaign mission is Downfall for infiltrating the Heart of Kalz's Lair, destroy the Darkness Relay. Keep forgetting which mission that's Radial Master not, but aside from that, the weekly Incursion Zone is in the Liming Harbor, which means the Partition is the Hard Reset, basically the Sparrow Section 1 for all of the Hard Resets. Then, just to think if I'm missing anything, ah yes, for Seasonal Bits, the Coil's uh, Rotation is the Sensorium Pavilion, the first steps are the Cell of the Sycophant and Divining Hall, as well as Sensorium and the Reaver's Orson. And like I've always been saying, it pretty much seems like that there's nothing different, it's just a shuffling of the order. Now to get into the Eververse before I get into other available stocks. Now I keep saying it, but just in case it has gone away... Yes, I do believe the Lunar New Year stuff has left the store, so I forget if that was the last week confirmed or not otherwise, but yeah, if you were looking forward to any Lunar New Year stuff, I believe it has fled the store, so if you missed out, you have unfortunately missed out until next Lunar New Year, but even still, it might not even be back. Uh, so on the front page, we have Gamekeeper from last season, which does not match its texture preview at all. Pretty dark. Then we also have Empirical Imperative, which does match, if I recall. It's a pretty solid carbon fiber and yellow look. A little bit of blue. This actually matches up with the Season 19 gear, if you wanted it. Then we also have Phosphine Stimulus, which is another blue rarity basic shader. They recolored and made a purple rarity shader just to send out. And a pretty good ornament in Directive Crass, which is a... Ornament for Sleeper Stimulant. They keep doing the thing where they give weapons a SIVA ornament, even though SIVA isn't here, even though sometimes we would just rather prefer to have SIVA. Then, as well, we have another, which is an emote. I forget if it was based off of Thor or not, but basically you just keep drinking coffee and slamming drinks and just keeping it going. Then into our main stores. So we have four shaders, Welded Brass, which is something from Season of the Dawn. A nifty one, this is what I use on my Void Go Boom loadout. Basically, it's a dark gray metal or dark grayish brown look with a deep dark purple glow. And Jacarina, which is a good one because even though it's only black and grays, it does have a solid hint of blue for it. Very clean, L looks a little bit better on weapons than an armor, or at least my armor. So look at that weapons before armor. And we also have Trinity, a shader from Season of the Risen, which is a pretty simple silver with green undertow. Pretty pretty solid look to it, not gonna lie. And we also have Tyrion Abyss from the next season in, in order, which is similarly like Jacarina, a silver and black one. There is some blues, but there is some purples. And before I press the wrong button, for our transmats, we have the Celebrate, or Celebrate Newness, which was from the first Moments Triumph of the year. Basically, just fireworks. And only the Finest, which is from Black Armory. Basically, the just weird 
Black Armory Spark Radiance, and the Box of Tricks from Season of Dawn, where you, you know, spawn out of a box. And into some of our big ticket items, there actually is a lot of cool stuff on the list this week. We have Mystical Reading, which is basically just the... I think it's like tarot cards, but psychic and in a weird kind of way. It's hard to say where that goes. And we also have the Hot Gossip Multiplayer Emote, which it it is what you imagined. It's somebody spilling the tea and talking about something. And, but getting way excited for no reason. And we also have the Egregore Shell, which was going to be the Last of Us Shell before Last of Us was a thing again in Destiny. But basically just an overgrown Egregore Ghost. And we also have the Steel Sky Jump Ship, which if you were looking at the Dragon set of ships in the store... This is the jump ship for it. It's really solid looking. I think I bought this for my hunter, but I forget if I did or not. And I think I might go ahead and do that, possibly. Then we also have Lightweight Custom from Season of the Splicer. Wait, that's Plunder. My bad. Basically, a very lightweight, sleek look for a Sparrow. This is one of those ones I would wish it was faster than everything else, just to give a little bit of cadence to the, you know, look, just to justify it. And then for the classes, I'll be doing a, a round around just to catch everything up in a moment. But just to wrap everything up quick, we have Brain Freeze as a ghost projection, which is pretty crap as usual. But for Titans, we currently have the ornament for the Lorely Splendor Helm, which is the one that has a companion ornament in the Silver Store that does have a effect when equipping the both of them. I forget if it was something exactly worth doing this one over other ornaments. But I do admit, this looks very solid. It still looks like Lowerly without making it look not like Lowerly. And does match armor sets a little bit more than its first version. And it does remind me of that, uh, actually, uh, Phoenix Protocol ornament for Hunters. Or not for Hunters, for Warlocks that they got some seasons ago. Speaking of Warlocks, they currently have the Beast Whisperer Claws of Ahamkara look. Which I'm not going to lie. This is another one of those sets that I wish was more a full set because this is basically a War Beach look for claws, which really does work now that I also notice that it has literal claws on its knuckles. I just wish it was both a little more unique because this is basically the Doomfang Pauldron ornament just on Claws of Ahamkara instead. So like I said, I love the look. The problem is it just seems a little bit unoriginal when just copy and pasted. Then checking with Hunters really quick. And wrapping it up for Hunters, we have Armory Exhibition, which is for, I think, Assassin's Cal, which is a really solid-looking ornament on its own, and I believe this also has the Companion Ornament in the store for this season. Uh, but it looks really cool, but Assassin's Cal kind of already has its own look, so unless you're just trying to go a whole other theme, or at least be a little bit more stealthy or iron-based, I would say, you know, just kind of meh. But jumping off from that point as well, for Banshee's weapons, we have another repeat in Lunalata 4B, Lightweight Stasis Bow, I've talked about it a lot, I think it's nifty, it does have origin traits, pretty solid for Stasis Headstone on a bow is pretty damn solid, considering bows are almost always aiming for headshots, but it does be, a, it, or it is a lightweight bow, it's missing a bit of damage on its part. We also have our Vandal FR6, which is a Stasis, um... What's the word? Fusion Rifle from Season Seraph had really solid options just because of combinations like Reconstruction and Choke Clip. But then the Choke Clip nerf happened, and Choke Clip is good for stunning Overload Champions, but not in locking things down as it was. So it's kind of hard to vouch for that thing being good anymore. And we also have True Prophecy, which a setup that is kind of solid, I guess, for the Crucible crowd. Time Payload is allegedly, and when I say allegedly, I mean allegedly. Really good at flinching people just because of the delayed hits, but then also field prep. Not exactly a PvP option unless you're sliding or crouching around like a crab. Then we also have Peace of Mind, a pulse rifle from Season of the Risen, which I believe from this weapon set was possibly the best weapon that was released next to Thoughtless in the Sniper Rifle Damage Crowd. However, this is more Crucible based anyways. Rapid Fire Pulse, uh, craftable, so I'd recommend just sorting this out and getting crafted. And we have Code Duello which was a solid rocket launcher once upon a time, but then once bait and switch was on the rise, lasting impression kind of not became so popular. It was the first of the sticky bomb rockets, but at the same time, it was not the last, and I think it is the least thought about since. And just really quick, if you've actually watched along this far, I do generally appreciate your time as well as your attention, but as well, basically, if you wanted to keep track of it, 
The seasonal armor synthesis bounties will be refreshing with the season air quotes rotation when they just kind of enter the next step of the season. So if you want to get double dipped on seasonal bounties, go ahead and complete all of these as much as possible. If you're running dungeons, I'd recommend just grabbing that one. That's really easy to run raid or dungeon. Otherwise, I would just kind of pick up the Vanguard Threader and just do strikes because usually destination ones take forever and the Grambit or Crucible ones are just slogs to do anyways. But but I digress. Getting into these shaders, we have Genotype Null Zero, which is a carbon fiber and orange look for... Ooh. Damn. That caught me by surprise on the old Warmind's Avatar set from Season 19. Uh, that white was unexpected, and I kind of really like where this is going. Uh, so if you want evidence of how a shader from Season 3 in Season 23, literally 20 seasons ago, is holding up, this one still holds up. Then we also have the Mad Monk, similarly so, uh, just straight up carbon fiber look from the same season. A little more metallic in some respects, but still carries the carbon fiber Ikelos look, essentially. And lastly, we have another of the Dead Orbit shaders, which is just varieties of black and white. A little more gray, though, with this setup. And on that note, my name is Matt Scorpion, thank you for watching, and I just want to say really quick, any likes, subscribes, or otherwise even comments and just getting conversations with me is gravely appreciated i am trying my best to get to a thousand subs because that is pretty much when my youtube channel can take the big next step and start expanding on it and hopefully i can do youtube a little more regularly also keep in mind i will have a video coming out soon as soon as i get down to doing it covering metas of perks and how they've kind of evolved over the years but while they evolve they really haven't changed that much with that my name is matt scorpion i will see you in the next video